Here's three great reasons to get the new Samsung Galaxy S21 5G at T-Mobile. One, it's free for both current and new customers when you trade in an eligible device. Two, T-Mobile's the leader in 5G coverage. So three, you can unleash 5G speeds in more places with your new phone. Get the new Galaxy S21 free at T-Mobile, the leader in 5G coverage. Phone via 24 monthly bill credits plus tax. If you cancel credit, stop and balance on required finance agreement may be due. Contact us. Qualifying credit and consumer plan required. See details at tmobile.com. What is up, guys? I'm Dusty Grant, the host of the DG and Friends podcast. I'm excited to take this ride with you as I get to know interesting folks from all walks of life and pick their brains about their journey. I'd like to sincerely thank you for tuning in. DG and Friends starts now. What is up, guys? Dusty Grant here, episode 14, DG and Friends. I am super stoked to have tonight's guests out of darkness. I've got Brent and Eric on the show. Guys, what, what is going on with you guys today? How's life going down there in Florida? I'm good, man. It's a little chilly for us Floridians, but... <laughs> <laughs> What's the weather like down there today? Uh, I think it's around 40, 50 yeah, Fahrenheit. Like seven in Orlando. Really? Uh, yeah, it's chilly for us. Wow, yeah. it was it was about it was about fifty here today in Kansas, and it felt like fucking summer. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I was walking around with no coat on. I was like, man, this is nice. It's like tropical for this time of year for us. That's very strange. Uh, so how's how's the uh, Out of Darkness camp going? How's things going for you? You guys just put out a record in mm-hmm. August, correct? Uh, yeah, I think that's when it came. It was a bit delayed, you know, because of everything going on. But uh, yeah, it's yeah. going good. It's been received really well. A lot of people really seem to like it. I haven't really heard anything negative. Um, we've sold quite a few. We've done five shows so far. And we've got uh, my hometown debut is this Saturday. So coming up. Saturday. It's at uh, 1904 Music Hall downtown this Saturday night. We've got a couple other really good local bands, Other World. And I think it's the debut of Divided Truth. Is that, uh, Jack- is that Jacksonville, Florida? Yes, Jacksonville, okay. Florida. Right on. So you guys are getting to like really play live shows and stuff. What's that like? I haven't been able to, do, <laughs> I haven't been able to do much of that myself. How, how have the shows been going? Have they been well attended and stuff? Uh, for the most part, it's been kind of like limited capacity, you know, like yeah. most places, if they're doing anything, it's a limited crowd. The first show I think was uh, about full capacity. Then we did a couple of live streams Um, We did a show in Orlando where the crowd definitely could have been a little bit bigger, but uh, we're hoping for a really good turnout um, this Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys been feeling like uh, I've been kind of feeling, I guess, out there just across social media land and whatever. It kind of feels like people are starting to feel a little bit more comfortable. We're starting to see some numbers decrease in some of these areas and we're starting to see some people getting a little bit more antsy for live music again. Are you guys, are you guys feeling it? I mean, are you guys feeling that people are ready to get out again or do you think people are still pretty apprehensive down there? I think every day I see uh, a new Facebook post saying, Oh, I'm just dying to go to a show. I'm just dying to get out and go go check something out. So, I mean, I see the excitement returning to uh, go out, venture out into the public again, you know, people's fears are, slowly dying down a little bit yeah i i booked my first show this week nice. i was like my first show of 2021 i'm like i'm gonna actually play a real concert and it seems that this one might actually this one might actually happen i'm not gonna have to cancel 20 of these bastards i i canceled a bunch of them last year did you guys have to cancel anything uh no we uh our recording was a little bit interrupted uh we right. just started recording right before it happened we got the drum tracks done and then uh there was a bit of a pause yeah, we were yeah. recording in in Orlando uh, or thereabouts, and things shut shut right down there. So, do you guys are you guys planning to like hit the touring hard? Or are you planning on any radio stuff or what? Well, you know, what's the plan for the future now that things are kind of opening up and you guys are getting back out there? Like, are you guys you guys are on a label, right? So the label probably wants you to get on the road and push it. Are you guys going to be going for radio and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, we'll take anything that we can get. Yeah, uh, the Curtain Call Records is our record label. They've got a bunch of festivals, but they're not till I don't think, like August or so. They're, they're kicking in in the summertime. <clears throat> after this show Saturday, <clears throat> excuse me, after this show Saturday, we've got a bit of a break. 
you know, we're going to kind of wait and see what happens, you know, see how much things open up. Yeah. We also have uh, some summer festivals that are, we're going to be announcing in a few weeks too. So we're really excited about that. That's awesome that those are going to happen. Cause I know there was, uh, I've seen some other musician friends of mine too, being like kind of worried that, you know, kind of worried that some of those things were going to happen again this year. And people are saying, Oh, there's not going to be any live music till 2022 and all this crazy shit. And I'm like, man, I really hope none of that goes down because I, I think the world could use some, you know, some metal shows. <laughs> yeah, I, people I are think, definitely itching, man. Yeah. So what, so what have you guys been uh, like, how did you guys get together? You, did you guys know each other before this band? Um, or did you guys meet doing this band or how did you guys, how did you guys meet each other? Um, I hooked up with a, a guy by the name of Rich Brown. He's the manager. I had an extended break from my main gig and I wanted to start a band of my own. And he found Eric actually on, uh, on YouTube, I think, or on Facebook or something doing some cover tunes. And he's like, oh, you, you know, you got to hear this guy. He's got an amazing voice. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. I was like, yeah, hey, yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I heard him and I was like, yeah, I really think we can do something with this guy. So we had Eric and me meet down in Orlando. We went to a local jam night. We got up and did some, you know, I don't know, some Judas Priest, Iron Maiden or something like that. We just seemed to really hit it off. <clears throat> and pretty soon after that, we uh, we started writing, you know, started getting together. And things came together pretty quick for me and Eric. Do you guys, do you guys, I, you guys must have a lot of different influences because I hear a lot of dynamics. I, you know, I listen to the record quite a bit today. It's oh, become cool. an, it's become a ritual of mine. Like the day of the podcast, I really try to like dive into people's stuff. I have a, I have a long commute to work to and from, so I'm like, I'm gonna dive into their if they do podcasts or comedy or you know fighters or whatever it is. I try to, I try to learn about them. But I hear a lot of influences, and I'm a metalhead myself, obviously. So, so like, you guys you guys have a lot of different things going on. Like there's some genty parts. There's some really heavy parts, some shredding. There's some really pretty parts. And it's just, you get, it's a really dynamic record. Where did you guys record? Um, we recorded the, we did all the tracking down at studio live in uh what, what town is that in here? Oviedo. Oviedo. Outside of Orlando. Yeah, studio live. We did all the tracking there. And uh, then we did the, um, Mixing and the mastering at Martell in Kingsland, Georgia. Oh, okay. Martell and DP. Yeah. You were talking and about I the mean, influences, though. I mean, they, they are pretty varied. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit older than the rest of the guys, except for the, uh, the other guitar player, Sean Johnson. He's, uh, he's only about a year younger than me. But uh, it's my influences kind of come from, like, <clears throat> you know, the traditional Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Pantera, Queens Rike, stuff like that. I think Eric's got some a bit of newer influences. Uh, who would you say, Eric? Yeah, uh, I dig a lot of the I, I dig a lot of the modern gen type of stuff. You know, I'm really into Tesseract. You know, but uh, I'm also really deeply influenced by, I guess, pop music as well. Yeah, I mean, I love heavy metal. I love uh, you know Metallica, Megadeth. You know, all the standard stuff. You know, but then I really dig that pop music. I mean, I've been listening to it since I was a kid. You know, you give me a sweet little radio hit, anything off that Hot 100 chart, I'll probably dig it unless it's, you know, way too out there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm that way, too. And it, I think I was resistant to it, especially in my young, my, like my young metalhead years. I think it was like the ego, like you had to be like Mr. Metal Badass and you couldn't get caught listening to like a Rihanna song or something and all your buddies would think you're a punk, you know, oh, you know, at, at that age when, yeah. and, and maybe they still would if they caught me, you know, but now I'm, I guess now I'm to the age where I don't give a shit. You know, I'm almost, I'll be 40 this year. Like if you don't like me listening to Rihanna, you don't have to listen. I'm driving. This is my fucking car. Who needs more noise, man? Right on. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've, uh, yeah, I've got a lot of the same like metal influences, the Pantera days and a lot of the grunge and things like that. So I I really dig what I really I really dig the record and I really like records that are really well produced and glossy. And your yeah, your record sounds awesome because when I oh, listen to a metal you do when I listen to a metal band, I think there's this this aspect of metal where there is during the recording process, it's like this precise, calculated, tight you guys know you you just recorded a record, obviously, and you guys have got a ton of experience. Um, but I can tell that like it's super cohesive, and you, I mean, it just it sounds fucking amazing. So, kudos oh, to you. you guys. 
do you think uh do you think there's like a full tour coming for you or or what do you is that your aspirations are you guys pretty much taking a full-time run at this at this band or do you guys have other projects going on still or um a couple of us are in other bands as well but yeah we're willing to put whatever it takes into it you know and that's yeah. the goal is to to, to hit it full time you know to, to basically tour the world you know once everything opens back up we're just doing what we can we're, we're branching out from where we are right now yeah so yeah. far we've only played in florida but i think the summertime there's some shows uh further up north you know you know i believe in georgia maybe the carolinas Virginia, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure exactly where, but uh, we're looking to kind of spread out from where we are, you know, to kind of, kind of that kind of approach. So do you guys do, will you be doing your own booking with the label? Do you have, do they have booking through the label? I mean, do, do you have, or do you guys have a booking agent already, like ready to work with you or how's that going to, how are you going to do that? No, we it's don't have a designated booking agent. What's that? No, uh, no, the, no. the manager does some of it. And then the, the record label, of course, would get us on any festivals that they're involved with. Gotcha. But they, they give you a little bit of leeway as far as like, if you guys want to book stuff yourselves or, or any of that, mm-hmm. they're not, they're not trying oh, yeah. to be in control of that or anything. No, they're no, no. They're, they're more of like a that. partner. Oh, okay. Yeah. They don't, they like, you know, when you're recording material and when you're putting it out and promoting it and doing all that type of stuff, they're not like riding herd on you and they don't have some a agent in the studio. Like, cracking the whip on you guys or anything then no <laughs> no definitely okay. we got full full creative control yeah. that's good i i you know i think more and more of the guys that i know that have that have been fortunate enough to sign deals and you know good deals for artists because i know there's a lot of bad deals out there but it seems yeah. like maybe there's a trend where the artists are getting treated a little better um mm-hmm. I, I certainly hope so i know some people that have been on you know been on deals that didn't that end up working out very well for them and i know it i know it really hindered their career and kind of soured them on the business a little bit so to hear that right. to hear the labels are out there treating people good is a uh, is encouraging <laughs> is kind of a really modern label you know and they, yeah. don't, they don't do things the old way they're they're all about uh going with what's happening in the market right now and uh, they really promote their bands and believe in them and and I think we're uh, we're really glad to be with them. Yeah. So so I have a question for you guys. Um, are you guys on the streaming platform, Spotify, um, you know, Apple Music, all that kind of stuff? Because I looked for you on Spotify and I had a hard time finding you. There was another. There was another. But I are you guys on there? I think they're going I think to so. not yet. release next okay. month. Okay. Which was telling me. Do you guys have do you guys have plans to upload to you know to all the streaming platforms and that type of stuff? Sure. sure yeah. It's it's not actually officially released through the label. I mean, we released oh, it ourselves okay. back when, but they're wanting to do the full thing. I, I think here in just a couple of weeks, as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think then we'll probably be on any platform that there is. Okay. Awesome. I was curious about that because I've I've seen some artists, especially lately, that I interact with on Twitter. They've been very adamant about like getting away from the streaming services and focusing more on Bandcamp. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that you guys, you know, you guys use Bandcamp. So I was curious if you guys were kind of part of the movement where you're like, no, we're going to put our music where, you know, where we can control it a little yeah. more. The idea um, was. Uh basically not to go directly to digital distribution. We got gotcha. you. We wanted to keep all our sales in house, you know, maintain control of the initial revenue. Cause I mean, it, it helped us out a lot getting, getting those CDs sold directly to the fans, you know, something about that process. It really, uh, really helped us get things together. Yeah. You build a little bit of a nest egg with the cash that, you know, you know, you're, you're, People don't want to call it a business, but you're starting, you know, you're starting a band, you're starting a business, you're starting a yep. partnership, yep. Yep. you need some cash and you have to build it and you have to grow. And if you don't have cash, that's real fucking tough to do, you know? Very. Yeah. Takes money to make money. Yeah, there's <laughs> not a whole lot of money in streaming, I don't think. I don't think so either. I think, uh, you know, I've and I've had that conversation with some other I've had that conversation with some other artists on this show, actually, you know, I, I don't think you can even think of Spotify these days as a, any type of a revenue generating asset to your business. I think you have to look at it as like a, only just like a promotional tool yeah, to get your stuff in new people's ears. Because if you're relying on streaming revenue, you're going to be, you're going to be a, you're fucked. I mean, you're, there's no, there's no, unless you're, yeah. And yeah, unless you got, unless you got a billion streams, 
which yeah, uh, good luck. <laughs> there, yeah, there's not a lot of people out there that have that many streets. Like you, you cannot sustain it. And like people don't understand, you know, you go to the studio, especially you guys with the recording like you've got. I assume that wasn't free. Um, how many, no. how many, <laughs> how many streams do you have to get on Spotify to pay for your recording? Uh, that's a good question. The recording costs us in, in excess of ten grand, so whatever it takes to get that, I, I don't have any idea. <laughs> yeah, I think at ten I grand, just know yeah, it whatever. takes many, many. <laughs> yeah, ten, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, pro- probably millions. I would say probably millions. I don't have the math yeah. in my head right now, but yeah, I, it's it's insane. Like I get a I get a streaming distribution from DistroKid. And it's like, I have my best streaming year ever. And it's like, here's a check for $11, buddy. Uh, <laughs> and, and you're just like, you're like, ooh, man, I did a lot of, I did a lot of legwork to get those streams. <laughs> that's that's it. Like, the, yeah, it, the, it, it, the way, you know, the way my bread is buttered is, is playing shows, you know, selling merch sure. and, and playing shows. Mm-hmm. And I haven't been able to do that. So I've been doing this a lot and, and trying to figure out ways to like stay engaged. And it's been great. You know, I was talking to Eric about it before we went live. There's no way I'd be sitting here talking to you guys had I not started a podcast. So, you know, it, it ended up working out for me. You know, I, I'm meeting new people and I get to showcase artists and I get to showcase friends. And I've had some interesting people come on and you guys are obviously no exception to that. And and uh, I'm just, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be sitting here talking to people that I've, you know, that I respect and people that I see and out there doing it. And and you're on a label, but you're still probably, you're still like an indie artist, right? Would you, you guys still consider yourself pretty indie, even though you're yeah. on a, a, are they like a major label? I, I guess I'm not, I don't, I'm not familiar no. with the label landscape. Well, I mean, they've got some bigger bands on there. One of the biggest bands they've got is the Dead Daisies. I don't know if you know who they are. Yeah. Got, they uh. Glenn Hughes and uh, Doug Aldridge, and up until okay. recently, Dean Castronova was in the band. So they're a pretty big band. They have a lot of bands that are on the charts right now. That was one of the things that drew us to them. You know, they they kind of really pursued us, as a matter of fact, and they're very enthusiastic about it. So, you know, that kind of sold us on it. Somebody that's going to be excited about it, it's going to push us, going to hook us up with other bands. So when you guys when you guys go out, uh, you know, when you do the official label releases, there are they planning a radio campaign? Or are you guys going to try to get on, you know, Sirius XM and all that type of stuff? Do you have do you have that planned? Or I mean, and if you guys don't want to talk about any of this stuff, you know, obviously, no, no, it's fine. Um, I think that's in the works right now. It's not a solid plan just yet, but they're formulating something for us, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And Rich is Rich is in here too. Um, and I, you know, I do my research. I read. I read up, but I'm just curious about. I'm just curious about different people's launch strategies and stuff like that, because I think these days the real challenge is, uh, you know, getting, getting ears on your stuff. Yeah, I found that to be the biggest, you, you can put, you can put a ton of effort and a ton of money and a ton of energy into promoting and, and, and getting a really nice sounding product. But you know, how are you going to get people to listen to it? How do you, mm-hmm. it's this marketing like puzzle that we're all trying to solve these days. And I think, I think having a label will probably help you with that stuff because they, they're probably, they're used to navigating the waters a little more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is definitely harder to stick out. You know, when I was coming up, there was maybe a hundred bands, you know, and nowadays there's thousands of them. There's so many bands. It's just so hard to stick out. And once you kind of gain a toehold and you struggle to get a foothold and so on and so forth. So what do you guys, what do you guys like to do when you're not playing music? You know, like what's your, what are your hobbies? What are you guys into? Um, for me, I like walking in nature. I live on 15 acres. It's, uh, you know, heavily wooded. There's a lake, go canoeing and stuff like that. I like to bike ride, stuff like that. Um, I like to listen to music, of course, but I mean, that's back to music. Um, stuff like that. Uh, I like to paint stuff like that. What about you, Eric? Well, I'm a bit of a nerd. <laughs> You're a bit of a nerd, you say? I'm a nerd. I, Why I is like that? Computers, you know, I'm really into, I mean, maybe not as much these days, but computer programming, I'm really big on that. You know, uh, I like uh, I like sitting around and reading really technical stuff. <laughs> so 
So I guess I'm a bit of a nerd. I don't know. I don't. I don't do much. I'm. I'm kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not true because I've heard you sing, man. You have a lot of. Uh, you have a lot of range and a lot of versatility. You have a. You have a very a very diverse voice, and it's really cool because I think in metal especially. I mean, you guys are a metal band. I'm not going to call you like. Oh yeah. Actor. You guys are a fucking metal band. So yeah, like in, sure. in, in a lot in a lot of metal bands, you you hear singers that are really good at one thing. Mm-hmm. And they're they're kind of one trick ponies, and I would say that you definitely are not that, Eric. I mean, I, kudos to you. You sound you yeah. sound awesome on the record. <laughs> so, do you have like do you did you take lessons growing up? Like, how did you get into singing? You know, I guess a, a brief synopsis or whatever. You know, of my musical history. I started uh, I started in when I was like maybe in elementary school. I got that recorder that they give you. I was really into that. Then I got a trumpet. Then I got a tenor saxophone. Then I got a bass guitar, then I got a six string guitar, seven string, eight string guitar, and then I started singing. It's kind of weird. I, I started singing last, but that's probably my, my favorite instrument out of all of it. So how long have you been singing? Have you been in bands before this band? And, and did you come up in the like in the Florida metal scene or how like what's your background? I started singing when I was 21 years old. I was uh, I was in a metal band. Uh, I, I couldn't find a singer. So I was doing the death growl stuff just by itself at the beginning. And then I started taking opera lessons and that helped me a little bit, but I, I felt like I kind of plateaued. And then I found a pop instructor that showed me a lot of pop vocal and he really uh, opened things up for me. And uh, from there on, it was just nothing but practice and learning material and pushing myself. And I just, I love doing it. You know I mean? I'm a, I love practicing, you know, all day, I catch myself, you know, going, woohoo. <laughs> You know, slowly little vocal vocalizations throughout the day. You know, I'll be walking in the park and I'll just start humming things to myself and I'll catch myself, you know, and it's embarrassing sometimes. These, you do it automatically, like in public, you know, an exercise or something. And you realize, oh, that kid's looking at me because I'm singing some weird stuff here. <laughs> well, I remember like, yeah, I remember when I was a kid and I'd be walking around singing or humming something and my dad would be like, do you ever shut up, kid? And I, and I, and I never understood that. And now I've got now I've got twin four year olds, and now I fully understand what my dad is uh-huh. saying. I'm like, do you guys ever fucking stop? Do you guys have kids or anything like that? No, 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 no kids. I Neither have to be a twin though. <laughs> but you are a twin. Yeah, I'm a twin. <laughs> do you have Do you have a brother or a sister? Brother. Yeah. Brother. Are you older or younger? Uh, it was a C-section, so we like to argue about it. We said he's <laughs> older, but it was like pop. Pop, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it all says uh, it's what on the birth certificate is what it says is the official. So if it says he's older than you, he's old. Were you guys identical or fraternal? They lied to us, man. They told us we were identical. And then somewhere along the line, I think we were like 14, 15. They were like, oh, yeah, you're actually uh, <clears throat> fraternal. <laughs> did you guys Did you guys look the exact same? We, we really did. We, we, we looked exactly the same until maybe we were like 22, 23, because I gained a little weight and he kind of stayed the same. <laughs> Yeah, my boys are uh, my boys are they look almost identical, but they're fraternal as well. So yeah, having having twins is a is a whole nother lifestyle. I can tell you guys about that. If you guys don't have kids, you, you definitely have a hard time with twins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. Any any plans like that? Are you guys married or anything? Or are you guys no. you guys are you guys are single, ready to rock and full time, gonna hit it um, hard as fuck. I've got a steady girlfriend that I've had for, you know, 10 years, but not oh, married. Okay. Definitely ready to rock, though. Yeah. You know, I've been doing this answer? for for 30, 40 years, so 30 years. Well, well, yeah, tell you know, talk to the people about your background. I know I have some people that, that are familiar with your, your past work and the Ice mm-hmm. Earth stuff. Um, so why don't you tell tell the people that aren't familiar with that? You know, tell tell me a little bit about you because I I've listened to your stuff obviously, um, but you know, tell tell me a little bit about you as a person, man. Um, well, I started off uh, playing music when I was about seven. I started on piano, like a lot of people do. <clears throat> me and my brother both did. He stayed and took about ten years of piano lessons, and he went on to play guitar as well. But I could never really get the hang of doing a bass line with one hand and doing a melody. So I gravitated towards drums. <clears throat> My next door neighbor actually gave me drum lessons. He was a disabled Vietnam vet, but he had a uh, a drum set. He was giving me like three lessons a week for a while. 
I did that for a couple of years and then I stopped and then I got pretty serious into it. And I was about 13. I started taking drum lessons from a, you know, a certified teacher and, uh, Got in school band. I was in school band ages or uh, grades nine through 12. You know, I played in the marching band, symphonic band, uh, played in the jazz band, did all that. And that was a really great experience that exposed me to a lot of different kinds of music and a lot of different percussion instruments as well. You know, like timpani and xylophone and <clears throat> stuff like that. <clears throat> that was really cool. But I was always a metalhead from eh, from about the age of 13. I saw Iron Maiden on the Peace of Mind tour. Iron Maiden with Quiet Riot opening up for him. And after that, that's pretty much I, I knew I wanted to do my version of that kind of thing. So I got in my first band about uh, first real band anyway, by the age of 15, started recording. So I started playing live about 15, uh, made my first recording at 17, um, started touring around the state. Later on, I made a full blown album with another band, uh, which you can actually find that one. We were called Prodigy when we came out, but we signed a small European deal and there was a band, The Prodigy, you know, the rave band, Firestarter right, or whatever. Right, right. So we changed our name to Oracle. We put it out on an album called As Darkness Reigns. It's on Massacre Records. You can actually still get that. Sweet. So I did that. And then I got with the Ice Earth guys in about 96. And I've played off and on with them since that time. Uh, done... I don't know, 500 shows maybe. And all over the world, uh, we played every continent except for Africa. They don't have much metal in Africa. And of course, nobody goes to Antarctica unless you're Metallica. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I've been in quite a few other bands. Uh, you know, we would have long stretches of time where we were off. Uh, and then there were times when I was not in the band. So some of the other bands of note that I've played with, Tempest Rain was a band that I played with for a number of years. We did an EP and a full-blown album. You can find those, I believe, uh, on whatever they're sold on, Bandcamp or whatever it is. Um, yeah, yeah. There's another band called D5 for a minute that I'm pretty proud of. Uh, some other stuff I guess I did. I did a record with a band called Silent Scream. Um, I just went in as their uh, studio drummer. Um, some other stuff I've done would be uh, played on a couple albums with a guy. He's got a band called Mother Load. Um, and I've played a lot of... Uh, you've been on the road for hours, covered 527 miles, listened to three podcasts, yeah. had two calls with your mom and one with your sister, and you're really hungry. And look at that. There's a McDonald's one mile up ahead meal. There's a meal for every moment at McDonald's. Enjoy a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit and bacon, egg, and cheese McGriddles. Get two of the same or one of each for four bucks. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with combo meal. Single item at regular price. London Stock Exchange Group is here to be your essential global markets infrastructure and data partner, where open isn't just a platform, but a philosophy, giving you the freedom to make your mark in the world. LSEG. Open makes more possible different gigs for money over the years um everything from like a german like a polka type of band oh really <laughs> a steel drum band uh, i just played drum set behind them but we did like a lot of latin and reggae and stuff like that sweet then everything from uh the occasional jazz band gig where you got to read out of the book it's all charts uh i've done some orchestra gigs those were cool those are pretty tricky um stuff like that and i mean i've been given drum lessons since about the 10th grade I started helping out the other drummers in Drumline. So I've done that. So I've been playing for you know a long, long time. I don't really want to fully give away my age, but <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I understand. People know how old I am because I I'm on here for an hour a week and I have to come up with things to talk about for an hour every week. And eventually right. people are gonna fucking learn how old I am. There's nowhere to hide. They they know what music I listen to, they know the things I talk about. They're like Hmm, he likes Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He's probably yeah. around 40 years old. Yeah. Right so, on. so do you get hired for a lot of session work or anything like that? Do you do any session work or, or you um, like hired I do. stuff? Uh, sure, I do that, but uh, I haven't gotten a whole lot of calls for it. I mean, <clears throat> for a while there, I was really busy. You know, I was always yeah. gone. I got quite a few calls, and it's like I, I can't do it because I'm not here. I, it didn't fit into their timeline. But um. Actually, I've got a recording coming up that I'm doing, not this weekend, but next weekend. 
I don't know if you call it a session thing. It's a guy I've been jamming with off and on for a couple of years. We were supposed to do it a couple of weekends ago, but the uh, guy, the studio actually came down with the, the virus. Oh, really? So postponed. But uh, yeah. So, so Eric, what was your first, what was your first concert? What got you into metal? Why are you a metalhead? Who made, oh who, who made you a metalhead? My first concert? Yeah, your first oh, one. I'm almost afraid to say it. No, don't be afraid. You, I just admitted that I listened to Rihanna, dude. You're safe. Okay. Well, <laughs> my very first concert was uh, Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> and it how was, was that? Awesome concert, man. I saw her at the AAA in Miami. American Arrow gave me a really, really sweet concert. What was the other part of your question? I'm sorry. No, I was just, I was just saying, what was the, was it the first concert that you went to that, like, you know, let you know that you were a metalhead? And right. Cer- right. It certainly wasn't a British. That, my next concert that got me really deep into metal was got Gigantor Two with uh, Megadeth. I was mm. really, really into that concert. And Opeth played that night. Also, I, I, I was huge on Opeth for a really long time. So that that concert kind of really sparked a lot for me. After that, I really dived uh, very deep into metal, and it really got me uh, into guitar, metal guitar, a lot more. So, what do you listen to these days? Like, who's who's some metal that you like to listen to? Huh. Well, if you're not, are you listening to metal? Maybe you're listening to pop. What are you listening to? Tell us what you're listening to these days. Uh, well, I mean, I listen to. I've been listening to a lot of Lady Gaga. I'm not gonna lie, I dig that. Yeah. Uh, recently, I guess Tesseract has been one of the more recent bands that I've been into. Uh, I've been diving back into Porcupine Tree again. I don't know if you know Porcupine Tree, but they're pretty, yeah. pretty rad with Stephen Wilson. Yeah. Producer, great musician, great uh, everything. <laughs> He's good at everything he does. <laughs> so the yeah, por- the Porcupine Tree stuff's the mo- the acoustic stuff, right? Yeah, some of it's acoustic, some of it's rock. Uh, it's it's really progressive. It's really modern and fresh sounding. I mean, I just I love it. That stuff is just it's, it's great music. Did you guys did you guys write the stuff together mostly? I mean, was it you two that wrote most of the material? And then you brought the other guys in, or did you guys all write the stuff together? Uh, Eric pretty much wrote it. There was one song that was uh, written by another fella, a guy named Chucky Shea. And there was one song that me and Chucky wrote the music for together, but Eric wrote all the lyrics. Uh, and I guess three of the songs were pretty much completely Eric's that he had from before. Oh, okay. So, so Eric, you write, you write on guitar, play guitar. You're a, you, you're a multi-instrumentalist, all that good stuff. It's kind of weird how it comes to me, you know? Most yeah. of the time, uh, I, I had like an acoustic guitar hanging out with friends, you know, just having a good night somewhere. And an idea just comes to me. I'll record it on my phone or something. Other times I'm sitting at my computer, you know, on an audio workstation. And I can start writing things out of nowhere. Other times it's it's just an idea that pops in my head when I'm in the shower and I got to get out of the shower, record it really quick. <laughs> it's cool, you know, I've had ideas since I was like, maybe 14 there's one song that we're going to do coming up that it started off when I was 14 years old and I only finished it in I think 2019 and now we're going to we're going to do that song so you guys have a lot you guys have multiple projects going on at once it seems like and you guys are cool with that like you're not like trying to trying to make people exclusive to the to this project it it seems like it seems like you guys are able to see other people yeah, um, Cody is in a uh, progressive band called Traversing Infinity. Yeah. Um, Bronzel actually plays at church. Yeah. And Sean is in uh, a couple other bands. Oh, okay, cool. Are so, you guys all full time musicians in the band? Uh, no. Not all for not all fortunate enough to be f- full time musicians. No, I mean it's really hard, especially in these times. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was just curious. I was just curious if the other guys in the band, um, like if the other guys in the band had, you know, had other projects where they were able to be full time. Uh, I, I, I was just curious about that, but no. So, so, so what are the, do you, are you guys going to record more? Are you going to, do you have a big year ahead of you? Like you're going to push the record tour for a year, see what happens or, or like, what's the, what's the next step for you guys? 
Well, once we get past the show this Saturday, then there's a break on plan live for a while. But then the uh, you know the record company is going to release the album and push it. Then we're going to see what the summer holds for us. But in the meantime, we're already gathering music for the next record. Um, I mean, this this record is really just an EP. So we want to go ahead and follow up with that pretty quickly, you know, with a full length album, maybe a, a bit of a extra long one, maybe even. We want to have everybody contribute and write because uh, we all come from from different areas. You know, like I said, Cody's uh, progressive. Uh, I mean, Eric's progressive, too. Um, Sean's more old school. Bronzel comes from a totally different area. And then I've got some songs of mine as well. So we're going to kind of get together and, uh, you know, see what we come up with. Going to be better than the one. Yep. So do you, so, I mean, you guys are committed to this project. You're not going to put the EP out. And if it doesn't do what you think it's going to do, then you're going to, you're going to go your separate ways and say, whatever you guys are, you guys are pretty much committed to, you know, just taking a run at it and going for it. Cause you, you guys seem to be, yeah. you guys seem to be pretty happy making music together. It doesn't seem like it's a, it seems like a, a it seems like you guys are passionate about this project, which is cool. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Cause you see some people go out there and they, they throw a couple things out there and they don't do well and then they just quit. And I, I don't know that these days you're going to find any success unless you're consistent and you keep pounding it, especially if you're coming from like an indie background or you're coming from a place where you don't have this huge budget behind you. Like, I, I don't think you can be a one and done. I think you have to be consistent. You have to keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. So it sounds like you guys aren't going to be short content, which is awesome. I'll be looking forward to hearing that stuff. Do you guys cover songs on stage or? We sure do. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, we've only got, uh, the EP to pull from right now. We don't we don't play anything that's not recorded on the EP. Okay. As far as originals, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, we do uh some of the classics when we were trying to come up with cover tunes. You know, everybody threw in kind of what they wanted to do, and uh, I kind of got all the songs I wanted. Really, <laughs> we do uh Symptom of the Universe, Black Sabbath. We do the Sentinel from Judas Priest. And then we do Children of the Damned from Iron Maiden. So we're kind of paying homage to the, you know, the founders of metal. So what's your favorite one? What do you guys like to play the most? Uh, I like Symptom of the Universe because, I mean, that's definitely a drum tune. I mean, the version of that on Speak of the Devil, the Ozzy uh, album, that was the first version of that song that I ever heard. And that was the version, that was the song that made me want to get another bass drum. I was like, man, I got to get double bass, man. They got Tommy Aldridge is going to town. <laughs> so that one's the, my favorite. You know, it's got uh, like five different spots where it's just, you know, drum fills out the wazoo. But uh, Eric may have a different favorite. I think I know what it is. It's the Sentinel. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's, really it's hard to pick. But Maiden and the Sentinel are both really good, but it, the Sentinel is such a challenge. I, I mean, I love the challenge, and Balfour really brings it every time. You know, it's got a lot of energy. Yeah, are you, I, I hope you guys make it to the Midwest. I would love to see you guys play a concert. I, I've, cool. I saw, I saw the live video or the one of your live streams. I think, or I think maybe Rich sent me the link or something. But I saw one of the live streams, and it sounded really good. Um, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping that uh, I'm really hoping that things go well for you guys. Thank, Thank you. Brent, Brent, do you play do you play other instruments as well, or are you just is it drums for um, you now? I mean, it's drums and percussion uh, are the only ones I would really claim to play. I play around a little bit with piano and a little bit with guitar, but I don't know if you can really say that I play either one of those. I write a little bit on both. He's lying to you because he also sings. <laughs> he sings. Well, yeah, I guess I play around with singing as well, but I've uh, never. Never played guitar, piano, or sang in any band. I've so been why in. can't you? Why aren't you singing harmonies and out of darkness? Well, we've got Sean Johnson on it. <laughs> He's got a much better voice than me. And for me, uh, for one, I don't have a headset microphone, and it's pretty tricky for me to sing and play. I've got a pretty big kid. I got enough going on back there, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, yeah, you don't see a lot of guys that have a kit like yours or playing the type of stuff that you're playing, trying to sing at the same time. He plays right, right. very tricky drums. I've got to yeah. say. <laughs> yeah, I, I was noticing that. There's a lot of there's a lot of changes and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's good and it's well written, but there are a lot of changes. It's very dynamic stuff, and I 
I appreciate that because I'm a I got you know I've got like ADD. I I can get lost, and if someone riffs on something for too long, like five seconds, I'm just like something shiny goes by, and I'm out. But when, when right. things are, when things are changing, it kind of it kind of keeps me interested, you know. So this morning. You know, sometimes you put stuff on that you never heard before. And you're like, all right, what's this going to sound like? And you don't, I didn't have a lot of, I didn't have a lot of preconceived notions. You know, I checked out the video when Joe sent me, you know, sent me your guys' information and stuff like that, but I really didn't delve into the music. And then this morning I was, I got up for work, was drinking my coffee. I was tired as hell. And I popped on Bandcamp and I started playing the album. I'm like, oh, my drive to work is going to be. <laughs> just what i fucking needed today awesome <laughs> so out of darkness it got it got me motivated man i i really dug it i i like what you guys are doing awesome. <laughs> so Thank what you. else guys what tell, tell me something else that i don't know about you How well we just uh we just got some merchandise out um so that's one thing that we're pushing we've got a uh, out of dark different live slash merch yep yep out of darkness live slash merch we've got a couple of t-shirts we've got the album cover we've got the logo um, I think we have some some girly type uh, V-neck shirts as well. Uh, we've got stickers. We've got posters. You know, we're just trying to get a little bit of a uh, merchandise out there on the table, so to speak. Yeah, trying to get the bankroll going. Yep. Just today we uh, we just confirmed a, a deal with a company called uh, Demons Behind Us, an apparel clothing line. They've got a really positive message. You know, it's all about recovery and uh, and helping people. You know, in need. And that message it really resonates with us. So are you, guys, are you are some of you are some of the members of the band in recovery, or, or and I don't want to uh, ask I don't want to ask too personal questions, but I'm just yeah. Gonna... Well, one of them is anyway. <laughs> is that you, Brent? Yes. <laughs> How is yeah, that working? Uh, oh, go ahead. No, no. I was just I'm just curious. Uh, what was your what was your drug of choice? Was it alcohol or drugs or? Um, it was whatever was around. Yeah, just a, just much, a obsessive, yeah. compulsive, just a just an addict. Yeah, well, I've always kind of had an addictive personality, and I've struggled off and on with it throughout my whole life. Uh, you know, I've gone through phases where I was completely clean, and then yeah. I would fall back into it. Um, you know, and uh, that was that's actually part of what the name is out of darkness. Um, you know, I've been completely clean now for. Uh, not quite two years. So, I mean, I think that was my last fall into the abyss, but the last, this last time was, it was uh, way worse than before. So you had, you had a rock bottom moment where you had to say to yourself, like, all right, I got to get my fucking shit together. Is that a set? Cause a, yep. a lot of people that have those issues, like I've had, I had some mental health issues earlier, you know, I guess maybe it was last year or something. I had some per really heavy personal shit going on. And I finally felt like I hit this point where I was like, all right, man, you're at a fork in the road here. You're either going to go like completely dark and it's going to get real ugly for you and your family man and your career man and all this stuff. Or you can acknowledge that maybe it's time for you to get some help with this problem that you have. And, and, and I, I kind of hit a rock bottom moment. So did you have a, did you have a moment like that where you're just like, fuck, I got to get this. I got to get my, I got to get my shit together. Yeah. It was more like an hour <laughs> than a moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it was, a a, uh, like a steady progression down. Um, you know, I got real thin. It became apparent my uh, appearance and uh, became apparent, like just in the way that I would talk and the way that I would act. <clears throat> and, you know, you look back now on it and you're like, man, what was I thinking? You know, but at the you're time, sick. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. At the time, you know, I, I thought everything was fine. It's like, <clears throat> you know, what what's wrong with everybody else, kind of thing. And then you're forced to look in the mirror. You think, yeah, you so, think people don't. You think people don't understand. You're like, people don't understand me. And it's mm -hmm. like, no, you don't understand that you're inebriated all the time and you're miserable to be around. <laughs> and yeah, it, it, yeah, it chased a lot of friends away. Um, and, you know, you get to the point where it's like, you know, if everybody's saying that I've got a problem, then maybe I got a problem. You know, right. If there's, where there's smoke, there's usually a fire. That's so. a, that's similar to what happened to me. It was like I got I got approached by a couple of close friends that had never really said anything like that to me before. And they're like, hey, man, are you OK? I'm like, 
I'm fine. You know, lying obviously, but I'm like, Oh, I'm good, dude. What? And they're like, uh, I think maybe you should talk to someone, dude. Shit's getting a little dark. You know, you've you've had some pretty bad news in these last few weeks. Like, I th- we're, people are worried about you. And then my mom was worried about me. And then my wife was like, have you ever thought about talking to someone about some of this stuff? And I'm like, okay. And it, it, that, it, was, that, it was a similar situation for me. I, I don't know that I would have acknowledged it had other people not come to me and said, hey, dude, we know you and this is not you, you know, you need to fucking help yourself. So right. you, at least, at least you're lucky you didn't alienate everybody to the point out of your life where nobody would say anything to you because I do have friends, unfortunately, that have gone down that path where they've refused to help themselves and they refuse to take advice and they refuse to listen to people. And, uh, they just continue down that road. And by the time it's a, by the time they, you know, by the, when they need somebody to help, there's nobody left around to help them. So yep. you're, you're lucky that you've got a support system. So how are you doing with it? Are you feeling pretty good with everything now? Yeah. And you feel yeah, like, I mean, there's like, no, there's no, uh, like recurring desire or anything. There's, I, I just, I don't, it kind of makes me sick to even think about it now. Yeah. You know, like some people say you always get the urge, but not me. <laughs> it's about the last thing I want, <clears throat> you know, yeah. I just want to, you know, try and refocus all the energy and time that I've wasted doing that into positive things like this band and, and music and, you know, spreading the love of music and letting people know that it's never too late. You know, every day that you wake up, that's another chance. Yeah. You know, another chance to do the right thing and get down the right road, and put the past behind you and don't let the past define you either. You know, in my case, there's some people that may never let it go. You know, they always want to kind of keep you down. But, you know, I've experienced over the years kind of a weird thing where it's like some of my friends were happy for my success. And then I felt like some of my friends and maybe even family members were Jealous. just waiting for me to fail. Yeah. I mean, I, I call it evil envy to where it's like, it, unfortunately, in a human nature, it's a. Uh, we can't help to, but be jealous sometimes of people that are real successful, you know, and you, you almost want them to fail. That's why, you know, I think certain people uh, like, I don't know, like maybe Tiger Woods or something, or, or yeah. you know, that's why he got jumped on so much for what he did. I mean, he's only human. What he did was not that terrible. I don't think, but you know, everybody jumped on him so quick because he was like squeaky clean as far as everybody knew when they found out he was human and made mistakes and whatever, it's like, ah, you know, that guy. Can you imagine the pressure of being someone like that though? I mean, could you imagine the pressure of being a tiger woods or a, you yeah, know, Michael some, Jordan. some, yeah, some mega star, like you can't even go to the casino without people taking pictures of you and bothering you and, and yep. doing all this stuff. And then people are like surprised when those guys snap. It's like you got the guy in a fucking pressure cooker 24 seven, you know, like you, you're not letting this dude live. This dude's yep. walking down the street with his kids and you're sticking a camera in his face. Of course, he's going to punch someone eventually. <laughs> like, right. I'm surprised he hasn't done it yet. If it was me, I'd have punched someone like five years ago and I'd probably already been at like, I'd have never got another gig because the first guy that did it, like, fuck you. <laughs> right. <laughs> what i mean but it's it's admirable like did you did you enter a treatment program or did you do it yourself cold turkey or how did you how did you Um, snap out of it uh i didn't go to any like an an in-house thing it was outpatient uh, that i did and actually um a guy that i became really good friends with when i finally really decided to make the break what i had to do was get out of town for a while You know, I've been living in Jacksonville for so long. I know so many people. So I did a couple of things. I moved from where I lived. So nobody knew where I was. I got rid of the car I was driving. I had a really uh, recognizable car. It had flames and stuff on it. There was only like two of them in town. I changed my phone number. And then a guy that I've become really good friends with. He was actually a singer for Iced Earth many years ago. He was on the second record, Night of the Storm Rider. His name is John Greeley. I had talked to him beforehand, and he kind of saw me when I was like, we met when I was in the downward spiral. But he had me come and stay with him for a while. He lives in Tennessee, and I was very isolated. Um, 
I stayed in a little house that we were uh, actually renovating and there was nobody else around. Uh, I mean, it was right off the highway. I mean, there were houses like you could see them in the distance, but I didn't know anybody and whatnot. And, uh, you know, he basically took care of me for a little while. I would have stayed up there probably a lot longer, but I had to come back for some legal stuff. I got you. So, but that's actually when I really made the break, you know, it was very, very kind of him to do that. And, uh, you know, I'll always hold a special place in my heart for that guy. And he's, he's also, he's a very talented guy. He's a very, very talented guy. And, uh, he's, uh, he's very spiritual in his own kind of way. And he's, he's a little older than me. He enlightened me on a lot of different things. <clears throat> yeah. Sometimes you need somebody like that to, to step in, you know, you mm-hmm. need to talk to somebody with some wisdom or, or somebody that just looks at things with a completely different perspective than you. Like my wife, I'll boggle. This is how I feel and think. And she's like, that's not my perception of this at all. Psycho. She's like, you're over, <laughs> you know, you're overthinking this thing or you're, you're beating yourself to death over this thing that you have no control over. It's like, you need to look at this a different way or whatever. And to have somebody offer you a new perspective, man, I'm, I'm just happy for you, man. That's, that's great. Oh, you. It's great that you've snapped out of it. Um, we are coming up on an hour here, guys. Why don't we tell everybody how they can get a hold of out of darkness, um, connect with you guys. Okay. Yeah. You want to do that, Eric? I think, uh, I don't know if Eric's still here. I think, <laughs> I thought, he he was just, I think Eric froze. Okay. Um, so, okay. So, so you're going to have to do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. You can connect with us uh, on Facebook, um, on Instagram, I believe on Twitter as well, but out of darkness dot live. Um, there's out of darkness dot live merch as well. Uh, you can buy the album on Bandcamp. Um, you can connect with us, uh, all of our personal pages. Uh, everybody's on Facebook. I think some of us are on Instagram as well, but the main one is out of darkness dot live out of darkness dot live. You can listen to the record. You can buy merch. You can connect with the guys. They're awesome guys with awesome music guys. If you're checking this out on Twitch, thank you very much. Uh, if you're wanting to, if you miss some of the episode or anything like that, all episodes are on Spotify and all podcast platforms. Bren, it was a privilege and an honor to have you on the show. Thank you. Me too, I man. will, uh, I will get you, I will get you guys links after I get this edited up and we'll get it up on all the platforms. So you guys can use it for hopefully a good piece of content for you. Um, I, if you guys ever have anything you want to come back on the show and promote, don't hesitate to hit me up, man. I I'm humbled and honored that you were willing to come on the show. Um, thank you so much. And look who's back. There he is. There he is. Awesome. I mean, uh, thank you as well, man. It's our, uh, privilege and honor to be here. Uh, some really good questions. I think we talked about some, some really cool stuff. We touched on things that we haven't talked about in any other interviews so far. So, and I appreciate it. You took the time to listen to the album and really dig into it. You seem like you honestly really like it. So I do, man. I I really appreciate it. And I, you know, sometimes I'm surprised and I was definitely pleasantly surprised this morning. Um, You you know, and then when you meet people that, you know, where the music's badass and the people are, are nice, it's, it just makes it better. So I'm, I'm super humbled to have made your guys as acquaintance and I wish you nothing but the best Eric. um, I think Eric's frozen again. I think Eric, (laughs) are you back Eric? Are you are you moving? Hey, Eric, do you want to give him any kind of link? Hear me? Yeah, anything yeah. anything you want to tell the folks? Uh, Brent did a good job of wrapping things up, but uh, do you have anything else you want to say before we wrap it up here? Uh, yeah, I, I was actually gonna say that Deadly Medley. You know what he's really addicted to? Kicking around on those drums, making a racket. <laughs> no, just, I'm just playing. <laughs> that, that, that's, a, that's a hell of a healthy one. Yeah, I traded yeah, no, drums for drugs. <laughs> drugs for drums. There you go. Oh, <laughs> drugs for drums. It's the other way around. It's the other way around now. Yeah, now traded drugs coming. for drums. <laughs> there yeah. you go. For those that are out there, uh, be sure to check out our merchandise. That's the number one way you could support us. Buy the record, buy some T-shirts, poster, you know. Follow us on, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Let your friends know about the band. Uh, get the word out there, and we will be in your town before you know it. Guys, out of darkness, thank you guys so much. Episode 14 in the books, DG and friends. That is a wrap. Stop watching mainstream media. Listen to out of darkness metal. 
that will be it on this Wednesday night, fellas. I wish you nothing but the best. If you ever need anything, don't hesitate to contact me. I'd love to promote anything you want to promote, and I appreciate you greatly. Thank you guys so much. We will see you next time on DG right. and Friends. Thanks a lot. All right, guys, that's a wrap on today's episode. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to the show on your podcast platform of choice to be notified of new episodes and leave a positive review if you dig what you're hearing. Guys, I would love to hear from you on social media. Let's get connected at DustyGrant57 on all platforms. All right, y'all, that's it for now. See you next time on DG and Friends. Here's three great reasons to get the new Samsung Galaxy S21 5G at T-Mobile. One, it's free for both current and new customers when you trade in an eligible device. Two, T-Mobile's the leader in 5G coverage. So three, you can unleash 5G speeds in more places with your new phone. Get the new Galaxy S21 free at T-Mobile, the leader in 5G coverage. Phone via 24 monthly bill credits plus tax. If you cancel credit, stop and balance on required finance agreement may be due. Contact us. Qualifying credit and consumer plan required. See details at T-Mobile.com. Here's three great reasons to get the new Samsung Galaxy S21 5G at T-Mobile. One, it's free for both current and new customers when you trade in an eligible device. Two, T-Mobile's the leader in 5G coverage. So three, you can unleash 5G speeds in more places with your new phone. Get the new Galaxy S21 free at T-Mobile, the leader in 5G coverage. Phone via 24 monthly bill credits plus tax. If you cancel credit, stop and balance on required finance agreement may be due. Contact us. Qualifying credit and consumer plan required. See details at T-Mobile.com.